Get your ears wrapped around the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. All the scoop you need to know from college basketball to the NBA and even March Madness. News of your rising stars. Topics on and off the hardwood. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast. Welcome to the show. Eddie here, your host. Uh, going to take you in on some of the best basketball news uh, that we've got. We've got some great NBA stuff going on. We've got some great college women's basketball going on. And we've got some great March Madness going on. Uh, I hope you guys are all doing well. It's been, uh looks like it's almost summertime. I think it is summertime, right? But it's really spring. Uh, it's hot out here. Uh, we've got some snow on the East Coast. We've got baseball's back uh that's a good we saw a lot of people in stands today for baseball games uh that was cool to see it was uh kind of like uh you know people back in stands is always good uh we're slowly starting to see started to be a little normal again right we haven't had that in a while so that's nice uh but let's get uh to this basketball talk we've got such an action-packed show today we got so much to talk about nba like i said march madness uh it's the biggest weekend of them all but first, I want to talk a little bit about uh, some basketball that we had earlier this week. And there were some good games. Uh, I thought the games were I thought the games were good. Uh, Monday we had Oregon State. You know, Houston uh, almost gave up the lead. And then Arkansas lost, a team that I thought was going to go. But Baylor, hell of a basketball team. And I've got to talk about that here in a second. But I want to talk about the USC-Gonzaga game. You know, USC came into this game... Uh, probably one of the best defenses around in the land right now. And they faced, so they faced the best defense. One of the best defense faced the best offense. And we kind of saw what happened. It wasn't close. It almost, it, it almost seemed as though Timmy for Gonzaga was like, oh, you mean to tell me this guy's a top five pick here? Mo, uh, Mobley? Okay. I'll see. I'll, I'll see what this top five pick could do. And he went off twenty three points, uh, five rebounds, four assists. He had a hell of a game, ten for nineteen from the field. And one of their best players, Kispert, didn't have a great night. Six for nineteen, couldn't really find it. Sugg seven for 11, 11, 18 points. Guys, Gonzaga is for real. I've been telling you guys this all year, all tournament. Like, USC, they made this USC team look bad. And defensively, USC was suffocating teams. Defensively, uh, Gonzaga is, like, almost to the point where they're like, okay, we know we're better than you. Let me just come out here and step on your throat. Let me let me finish this game before it starts. They put 49 points up in the first half. Like, that's a, like, 49 points? I mean, think about it. In two quarters, that'd be two NBA quarters. That's a solid, I mean, that's a solid quarter. Or a solid half, I'm sorry. And in two quarters in the NBA. Against a good defensive basketball team. They came out. They let them know. And USC obviously overachieved. The Pac-12 overachieved. And I want to talk about that Pac-12 a little bit later here in this segment. About about just a Pac-12 in general. But Gonzaga guys, they are for real. Coaching, talent, NBA, they've got it all. They've got, as I like to say, you know, I like to say this this word a lot. They've got dudes. They've got dudes. And they only play seven guys. So it almost seems like they get in rhythm. It's it's almost a little bit easier to get in rhythm for guys like that. You know, I see a lot of college teams kind of play with bigger uh, lineups. And sometimes it's hard to get in rhythm, especially college basketball guys. Not a lot of them can get in rhythm so much. And with Gonzaga, they just run, they gun. Uh, UCLA, UCLA's got a tall task, uh, and like I'll talk about it here in a second. But 
Gonzaga guys. They are so much NBA talent, so such good coaching. They just came to they just came to Indianapolis and said, "We're the best team, and we're going to step on your throat." And uh, who's next? That's basically what Gonzaga's doing, taking no prisoners, just kind of going about it and winning, and looking at making it look easy. Then we had UCLA against Michigan. I thought Michigan played into UCLA's hand a little bit. Now, Mr. Coach Cronin could coach, first off. And, you know, sometimes UCLA didn't know if they had their guy. They were trying to find the next Wooden. They were hoping the Wooden would walk into their poly pavilion. And, you know, UCLA didn't really know about Cronin. You know, UCLA fans didn't know. They have their guy. This guy could coach. And all this uh, West Coast guys are soft mentality thing? Hey, they came to play. They came to play. Now, Michigan is in good hands. You know, Jawan Howard's first year did a great job. Obviously, a tough year, too, uh, with all this COVID stuff. They had a pause in the middle of the season. Good basketball team. They're, you know, Michigan, I thought, played really poorly. Michigan did not play well. Personally, I don't think they played well at all. Missed a lot of easy shots. Uh, Wagner never really never got going. One of their top guys. Obviously, they missed livers, but I, I, I'm not going to talk about guys that aren't there just because that's not they aren't there. But UCLA, man, they, if you watch that game with Dickinson, they they were just letting them bang. I think the officials again. I don't want to get too caught up in the officials because you guys know how I feel about officials in college. I think my proposal is they should put maybe the Final Four or the Elite Eight put NBA refs in because you know I just think. Anyway, I don't I don't want to get too big on the refs. But they had some questionable balls. But they were letting... The, I think they should have let the guys bang. They were letting them bang down there a little bit. But Dickinson, guys, they sat down on defense. And UCLA wasn't as big. I think Riley had four... I think he had four fouls at one point. Did he have five? Uh, I think he ended up fouling out. But he was playing big. At, at some point, we saw uh, uh, Juarez, uh, Hawkes come down and guard him. Like, Dickinson was having a, I mean, you know, he was trying to have a night. But Wagner, to them, I, I really think Michigan also played into UCLA's strength. They let him dictate the 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 pace of the game. If you watch UCLA, they like to walk the ball up. They literally walk the ball up every possession and run a set. Like, and Michigan, they like to get out and run a little bit. Michigan was up early, and then UCLA t- ended up taking, taking over. Uh... And they kind of didn't look back. It was a defensive battle. Uh, they were playing hard. At one point, the game was like 11-4, 11-2 at one point. Like eight minutes into the game. Defensive battle. Uh, but like I said, Michigan is going to be in good hands. Uh, I just don't think they... Uh, they played into UCLA's hand a little bit too much for my liking. Uh, I think they were better when they're running and kind of gunning and all that good stuff. But give UCLA credit, guys. No one really saw them 11 seed kind of play at the play in game. Uh, they beat Michigan State to get there, and uh, Michigan's a good basketball team. Good basketball team. They got some pros there. You guys know I always like to always like to talk about my pros in college. You know that's who I think usually wins games is pros. Um, but yeah, guys. But this Houston Baylor matchup is going to be a street fight, an alley fight, like. It's going to be a, a brawl. There is no other way to put that. That's going to be a brawl. Like, they're going to... The, both of those teams, like, suffocate you. They want to kill you. Baylor's favorite by five. Guys, Houston, they're so long. They remind me of, like, the Lakers last year. I talked about this earlier. They're just so long, and they fly around. It looks like they like each other too. The team, obviously, a lot of these, all these teams like each other. That's, but I think this is gonna be a hell of a matchup. I don't want to say UCLA Gonzaga is not, but I think one versus two Houston Baylor. Woo! I I I I I'm excited for this one. This is one that I'm really excited for. I'm really, really excited for. 
There's going to be a lot. Any loose ball, they're both going to be uh, diving all over the floor. Both teams play hard. That's my favorite part about, you, you know, as perfect as it, the NBA game is, you know, sometimes you like to see college basketball for their flaws and kind of guys diving all over the floor, guys, you know, uh, putting it, leaving their heart out. And, so, and not to say the NBA doesn't, because they do, it just they just make it look so effortlessly. But this game, Houston Baylor is gonna be that. Guys just battling. Battling. And uh I think that's gonna be the game of the personally the game of the weekend. And I don't know who I I think Baylor Baylor they say is the, the team the uh that's kinda like a Gonzaga team that no one really I guess people talk about them. They're a one seed, but Houston's don't look out for them, and I also love the co- I, I love uh, their coach. He wears a jumpsuit on the sideline. I love that. I'm all, I'm a big comfort guy, so I, I like guys. I like people being comfortable, so I like that. Coach on the sideline, be comfortable. Wear your uh, wear your jumpsuit. Wear your sweats and your uh, polo. I like that. I'm a fan of that. Nice Jordans on. And then the nightcap, we have UCLA against Gonzaga. <laughs> I I think this is going to be. Uh, I I don't know what's going to happen. I, I do know what's going to happen. I, I, I want to tell you what's going to happen. And uh, I think Gonzaga is going to really. So UCLA was beat Michigan, right? And you know, nothing against UCLA. They're a good ball club. Uh, I want to be the night. I, I don't know. So So UCLA to me. I think they've made it really far. They, they, they're a tough team. Cronin's a good coach, and I think the team has played well. The only way I see Gonzaga losing is if UCLA completely does what they did to Michigan, slows the game down, no transition points. Uh, Gonzaga misses a lot of easy shots. Uh, somebody misses the bus. Uh, like, I don't see UCLA winning in any case. I don't... But that's what I—that's what you felt against Michigan, almost too. You know, even though to Michigan's defense, Michigan had been there since like early March, I want to say, and that's not an excuse. That's not an excuse at all. Michigan had to be better. Michigan, you know, they—they—they they, they didn't show up. They played bad. Michigan, there's no excuse for Michigan. But Gonzaga, they haven't had a bet. I think the closest they've come to losing was against West. The team that gave them problems was like West. I don't say losing West Virginia and then BYU in their in their championship. But everything else has been a blowout. Nothing is nobody's come close to Gonzaga. And UCLA is gonna have to play nearly perfect, I think. I just don't know if they have anybody to really I don't know if they have anybody to guard Suggs. Point guard's a little smaller. Campbell kid's a little bit smaller. Uh I don't know if he's gonna I don't know who's gonna guard him. Too many pros. I, I tell you guys this a lot on my show, I, the pros and the coaching. And by pros, I mean NBA guys. Gonzaga's got NBA dudes all over the floor. Suggs is going to be a top five pick. Timmy's going to be an NBA guy. I don't know how good he'll be. He, he'll, he'll get some time, though. They've got dudes. they got dudes. I don't know if UCLA is going to... You know, I'm a West Coast guy. I'm a Pac-12 guy. USC guy. But I'm rooting for the Pac-12. And I'm going to have a little... I, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the Pac-12 here in a second. But, ah. Gonzaga. Too tough, I think. And I think UCLA's run's going to come up a little bit short. The people in Westwood are happy. Burning things up. Good for them. You shouldn't be burning things up. But, you know, they haven't been there in a while. They deserve it. Yeah, you should celebrate a little bit. I'm okay with celebrating. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not a get off my lawn type of guy. I'm not. I'm all for guys having a good time. But be safe. Be safe in Westwood. If you hear me in Westwood, be safe. Uh, but I'm gonna go Gonzaga, and I'm gonna go. Uh, man, they're saying Baylor is kind of like the West. Ah, uh, like the West Coast. Ah, uh, Midwest or what? It, what would what Baylor be? Midwest? Uh, what, what's Texas? Not this. I don't know. Whatever the they're the Texans Gonzaga, I, I like Gonzaga and uh, the Battle of Texas Baylor and Houston. I, I, I it's gonna be a good game. I'm not even gonna tell you guys who's gonna win. I don't. I, I really don't know. 
if I had to put my money on the line, my own money, you know, I'm going to put my money on Baylor. So if Eddie, Eddie, Gar- Eddie Garcia's money has it to be on the table, I'm putting Houston and Gonzaga. Baylor and Gonzaga, finals. And then you know who I got in the finals. I think Gonzaga's just too good. Uh, too many pro, too many NBA guys, too much talent. But I do want to talk about the Pac-12, though. I, I the, the Pac-12 got overlooked this year. And I have a couple reasons why. I have two main reasons. My two, my two, my two biggest reasons. So my two biggest reasons are, first off, they haven't been good in a long time. I mean, Oregon's been pretty good. Uh, Arizona, a couple years ago, got knocked off by Buffalo. Like, they should have beat Buffalo. Uh, Arizona's usually the team that, you know, kind of puts on for them. Um, And then the other reason is, is they're West Coast. So, West Coast... Is is one of those things where games come on six p.m. Uh, seven o'clock he, uh, Pacific time. That's ten o'clock Eastern time. Nine o'clock Central time. That's late. If you want to go catch dinner with your spouse, your wife, your husband, uh, your kids, your friend, you can't. You can't watch a Pac-12 game. You're not going to watch Arizona State, uh, Oregon State. It's on at ten o'clock. It starts at ten o'clock. You're in bed. Sometimes, what, are they, what days do they play? During the week, you're in bed. You got work tomorrow. Kids got school. You can't watch them. And does that kind of affect the Pac-12? I think so. A lot of teams are overlooked. Not many, not much scouting reports on them. These so-called experts. No expert really had Oregon State. The experts had uh, Oregon State going, to winning, getting twelfth in their division, twelfth in the Pac-12. Guys, they made it to uh, they made it to the elite eight. They were supposed to be twelve. UCLA, they're in the playing. They beat Michigan, the number one team all year. But, you know, come on, USC. No, no one stays up U for USC games. But the the. the and, and there's not really an excuse for that, you know. There's really not an excuse. And I, I guess being up late, you don't want to stay up late. You don't want to stay up watch it, you know. Not many primetime games for the Pac-12. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. That's that's my knock on the that's my knock on college basketball and and the Pac-12. Is it is it because that is it because their games are too late? You can't scout them. You don't know how good they are. There's talent here on the West Coast, let me tell you. Tournament of, uh, Conference of Champions. We're not just good at football. Football's good, too. But, but these hoopers. How about that? Be Michigan. USC. Come on. Show some love. Huh? Show some love. Show some, show some love of the Pac-12 in 2021, 2022. You know, Oregon, another good team. Oregon's all. Oregon's, you know, they've been around for a while. They've been pretty good. Uh, but hey, it's all good. Uh, then the women's side, the women's side is going to got a good final four. I think Stanford, uh, with the Wilson, with the Wilson gal, uh, Russell Wilson's sister, and then UConn, Arizona, two Pac-12 teams. How about that? Two Pac-12 teams. Come on. Don't, uh, no, you might Pac-12. I'm going to have a whole segment on the Pac-12 here pretty soon. I might not get many listeners because they're probably still asleep or away, you know. But hey, UConn's just good, guys. U- UConn's a hell of a basketball team. Sanford's good too. South Carolina's good. Arizona's good too. All these teams are good. But to me, this uh, Page, this Page, freshman, baller, baller. She's a baller. There's no other way to put Page. She's a baller. If she would, El- Gino had a thing the other day. He had a, he had a conference about, hey, what do you think about the girls' rules? Terrible. They can't do one and done. She would be the first pick, guys. She'd be the first pick on, and it wouldn't be close. She'd be the first pick. Got she. If you haven't watched the women's tournament, turn that on. 
Guys, she plays like a swagger. She's so poised, not afraid. She won a bit. She won everything. She won every. What, they play in the American. She won every award. What do they put? No, they play in the Big East for the women's. I'm sorry. She won Big Big East uh, Freshman of the Year, Big East uh, Player of the Year, First Team. She won everything. She's a baller. And obviously, should they do one and done in, in girls basketball? Yeah, why not? Men could do it. Why can't the women? Uh, maybe they want them to develop a little bit more. You know the games. But this girl would. Be, this girl doesn't need anything. Like obviously, she might need to get a little bit stronger, maybe a little bit bigger. But her game is ready. She's ready to go. Like she, she can make a WNBA team a lot better. Yeah, and I got UConn again. I think UConn is uh UConn the Huskies, man. They're they're a good ball club. So I'm going Gonzaga and the and the Huskies. You guys know you guys know I've been rolling with my Gonzaga Bulldogs all year. Uh and then this Paige guy, I started watching her the other day. Jesus. Just watch just watch her play and you'll 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 see why I'm raving about her. Good basketball player. Young, poised. Check her out. Uh, we'll be back on the show. We got so much more to talk about. We got Andre Drummond injury to talk about. We've got uh, some more uh, NBA stuff to talk about. Uh, I might even defend the Pac-12 a little bit more. I don't know. Hey, stick around. We'll be right back after this show. After this break, I'm sorry. Are you looking for the very best NFL and college football podcast? Then check out the GSMC Football Podcast. Get the latest football news both on and off the field. From the NFL draft to trades to the rumor mill to the NFL combines. They got you covered. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash football dash podcast. Get updates on college rivalries, game day insights, and much, much more. It's football talk the way you want it. This show eats, sleeps, and breathes football. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, We've got so much to talk about here, so let's get right to it. I want to talk a little bit about the NBA as a whole, talk about some headlines, some big... I'm going to play a little Dead Devil's Advocate here, too. On, So, I argued about why James Harden should be the MVP, but I'm going to tell you why he shouldn't be the MVP. Just playing Devil's Advocate, I'm not saying it's what I think, but I'm not going to say that. Coming up here in a second. Um, and then, uh, so... We talked about we talked about uh, the one and done rule, and if I like it, Cunningham obviously going to the NBA now from Oklahoma State. He declared he's one of the best players, which is a big reason why I had the Oklahoma State Cowboys doing well in the postseason. Uh, obviously, that didn't go as planned, um, but they were so good. But he's an, he's one of these guys that uh, is it. What's the one? What's the one and done rule, right? Like, what? Why do we have? Like, what should it change? What do you think it should be? So, personally, my personal opinion. So, like for the for the women's side, you know that page, page from UConn. Should she go? Should she be able to go? Absolutely, she should be able to go. I think it should be in in the in the power of the player. I am I'm, I'm a firm believer. Uh, obviously, some people just aren't ready for the NBA, and sometimes. You, you would see that back in the day where guys just weren't ready, right? And, and you know, they just weren't ready. You know, 18-year-old kid, really, 17-year-old kid, I'm sorry, really isn't ready to go play against grown men. And I get that sometimes. I really do. But, like, LeBron obviously did it. Kobe did it. Uh, MJ went to college, obviously. Uh, Magic went to college, obviously. Um, Kevin Durant went to college. But some of these guys, like, even like Zion, think about like a year in the NBA. Obviously, it's a big change because because in high school you're playing what 20, 20 some odd games, maybe a season thirty, maybe right. And then the NBA you're playing you're playing a, a whole slate of 60, 70 games if you make it to the postseason, whatnot. So forward eighty games. So is it a big change? Yeah, is is college 
uh, you know, kind of a stepping stone. Yeah, but now you're seeing a lot of guys go to G League. You see a lot of guys go uh, overseas now. You're seeing a lot of guys, you know, kind of do different routes. Not the NCAA isn't. So I think they're going to have to find a way to make this happen. So guys, to me, like Suggs, can he go play for an NBA team? I think so. Like he's big enough. He's fast enough. He's kind of got it going. Um, let's see who else. Like Cunningham, he, you know. What's he, what's his, what's he like? A, he's, I think he's like a Sean Livingston type of guy, I think, right? But they've got to figure something out because there's a lot of guys that I think are ready. You know, obviously college is great. College basketball is great. And you guys know, I've talked about it on the show. I'm not, I like college basketball. I, 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 I like college basketball. I do. I love the NBA game a lot more. Uh, I'm not, I, I, everybody that knows me knows that. I love I love March Madness. I'm a sucker for March Madness. Uh, there have it hasn't been as fun as it has been in the last couple of, you know years, but it's a weird year. Uh, it's okay, but we obviously it's going to be looked at here in a sec. It's going to be looked at. I think it's going to have to be looked at because personally, I think guys should be able to make their choice and women as well. But let's get to this NBA news. Uh, Andre Drummond, uh, not the not the debut the Lakers look for. Uh, with Andre, uh, it was a tough one. He kind of went out early. Uh, he was in a little bit of foul trouble. He had a block around the first quarter. So you guys know I'm a little bit of a Laker fan. Uh, so I do watch, uh, them a little bit closer than, uh, most. And he went out with like, a with, with, with a tough, I think it was like a toenail they're saying he's going to miss two games. So it's nothing long-term. Uh, hopefully it doesn't linger on. And I, he should be fine. Oh, the Lakers aren't too worried. He didn't make the road trip. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't go with the team to uh, Sacramento. Uh, but they said he should be fine. Uh, there was another cool moment in that game. Uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo came out and said it was the best moment. Uh, it's one of the best moments he's had in the NBA. I mean, think about it. So the Greek, they're obviously the Greek freak. They call him. He. They go, they go, and uh, they're they're from Greece, that, you know. And he says they would, him and his brothers would literally lay on their beds all together because obviously, they, you know, they didn't have all the money in the, coming up, and they would dream about playing in the NBA one day. And last night in the Lakers Milwaukee game, they were all on the floor together. I thought that was awesome. I thought that was great. Uh, it was cool to see. I was watching with my dad, and my dad was like, "Oh my god, can you imagine how cool that is?" Uh, I, it just can you imagine the parents, uh, the family? It just it's got to be a cool moment, you know. Even you know, even when you're you're obviously Giannis is the top dog, uh, and then his brother uh, Thanasis and uh, it, it, I forget his younger brother's name, but uh, you know it's it's got to be a cool like he said it's his best moment ever. It, how can it not be right? Uh, it, I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome. Like I said, Drummond's going to be out for a game or two. Uh, the Nuggets. Uh, the Nuggets beat the Clippers uh, tonight. Uh, the Nuggets and the Clippers, man. Guys, they're just... Uh, the Clippers, I keep trying to tell you guys. Like, wh- wh- who are they? Like, what are the Clippers? Right? Like, I, I don't know. What are the Clippers? What are they? And then last night, uh, two nights ago, I want to say Wednesday night, Guys, Luca. So I watched Luca my second favorite player in the NBA. I've talked about this before. After the game, this is how I, I, I've always loved his game. I've always loved his game since he was a rookie. Uh, I didn't really know much about him when he was coming into the league, but he's one of those guys when you watch, you're just like, "How? Wait, what? And wait, are you serious? Did he just do that? Like, Luca?" And he's smiling. That's probably my that's probably my favorite part about Luca is he's like smiling while he does it. He's 22 years old. 28, 8, and 8. He obviously came he, he started off the season a little out of shape. But this thing's he, guys, he had a setback yesterday from like maybe five, six feet behind the three-point line. Behind the three-point line. Still stepped back. So I, I my buddy worked for Nike, I called him up. I was like, send me a Luca jersey. I want it now. It's, Extra large, I I need it. Like the guy is special. I've I said you know people say Zion's next after LeBron. 
LeBron may be, LeBron's still playing at a high level. But after I think it's Luka. Turn on a game. Just turn on a Luka game and you're going to be like, oh my goodness. How, like, so the thing about Luka is he's not even that fast. Like, he's not like quick, but he knows how to get to his spots. Seven for 11 from three. Swishing two. I don't think any of those touched the net. It's funny because he was a minus two for the game. You know, he still got to work on defense a little bit, but 36 points. <laughs> Guys, he's special. He obviously would have been in uh, an MVP conversation. I think it's a little late for him to get into it personally. Um, But that brings me into the topic of why shouldn't James Harden be the MVP? Why? Why shouldn't he? So, obviously, like I I talk about it, players having power. It's a good thing to have in the NBA. Something LeBron, I think, was the first one of the first guys to have it. You know, it was usually like, a owner could do something and they could trade you away and it was kind of what they thought and that was uh, how it went. Now, these players have, you know, James Harden said, I'm going to show up. I'm going to eat my burgers. I'm going to be a little overweight. I'm going to kind of just do whatever. Houston's not cutting at one out. So he kind of shows up and just kind of going through the motions, not really, I don't know if he was really even caring. I don't know if he was like into it at all. But he comes to Brooklyn, all of a sudden he's tearing it up, carrying the team, being the guy. Got, I, I've said it. Would they be that team without James Harden right now? And I, my answer is no. He's led them in every category. He's been there. He's efficient. He's uh, He plays every night. I think showing up is a big thing. That's why LeBron's so, guys that show up, they play every night. You know they're going to be there. Like that's that's a huge part. That's a huge thing to me, guys that show up. That's why you know in grade school and whatnot, you get an award for showing up every day. Hey, I hate to say it, but that was me, an attendance award. My mom, my mom would show up to the awards show because she knew I was going to get at least one award. That's because I'd show up. That's why for the SAT, if you write your name, you show up, you get points. This when you write your name, you get points. So to me, showing up is important. That's why I don't trust Kyrie. But that's enough about Kyrie. But James Harden to me, so this is why I, I keep coming away. But this is why he, sh- so he basically like Fran- like he, you could say, and obviously just not him. And it's a lot more on the the Rockets. They traded him away for things that could be. Uh, I think the GM said it, be uh. Uh, judge me in 10 years come on man don't say that but like like so like james harden should he get penalized for leaving a team in such disgust for leaving such a, a, a team in so like i kind of like i don't want to like how do i say this what's the best way to say he left them uh he left them at like basically with nothing obviously it's not his fault if i was a gm i would have shipped them off to like i don't know I would have shipped them off to like uh, like the Magic or something. I would have shipped them off somewhere like that. I would have, you know, the Magic or like the, who else? The Kings. I would have shipped them off to somewhere he didn't want to go. But instead, they sent him off to the Brooklyn Nets. So is he to blame? No, I don't know. But he left them that team. You know when a, like a bad breakup? It almost feels like it's a bad breakup. And somebody got the, the poop end of the stick. And that happened to be the Rockets. And all of a sudden, he leaves your the girlfriend. And all of a sudden, he's thriving. You know? And that's kind of what's the deal with James Harden. He went to a better situation, obviously. Maybe it's because he's winning. But we don't know how good James Harden's going to be yet. We've seen him do this before. We've seen him have great regular seasons. We've seen him tear it up in the regular season. The postseason time is... Like, you know? We don't know yet. We don't know. But for so far, he's been good. But my thing is, should he be penalized for leaving a team and kind of playing like he was? Because I'm not going to sugarcoat it. He was a little fat. He was a little chubby, which is okay. I'm a, I'm a dad bot. I have a dad bot. But I'm saying, should he get penalized for that? Like, what do you think? I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. I don't know. It's a good argument. Like, should he get penalized for like, I don't know, not being the player he was supposed to be, I guess? 
somebody came up to me and asked me that. And uh, so I wanted to bring it up on the show and kind of see what, how it went. But should it be that way? I don't know. It's a good argument. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun to talk about. I I don't know. Hey, I don't know. It's something to think about, too. I'm just saying. It's something to think about. So, I uh, I had a... So, we all have teams in cities that just don't feel as big. And it, we're obviously talking about James Harden and the Brooklyn Nets here. So, in cities, you have, like, the Lakers and then you have the Clippers, right? In New York, you have, like, the Nets and, like, the Knicks, right? So... The other day, the, the the Nets and the Knicks played, and it just didn't seem. It was like the Knit. Like so, if you if you're from LA, if you're from, let's see what other cities got like a little brother type feel to it. Um, uh, let me think what cities got that vibe. Um, who's else got that vibe? So they so let's just talk about that. So they lost to the Nets. Uh, obviously, New York is buzzing with. They're good now, and you know Julius Randle's kind of their uh, their their hero. He's probably going to sign a, ma- a massive deal with them. Uh, Thibodeau's coaching well, and they- they've got it going. Quickly's good, topping in. I-, I don't know what they're going to end up doing with him, but it's like a little brother, big brother type situation, right? And does that take like what's the what's the what's the Brooklyn Nets like parade going to look like? Because to me, so for for instance, for me, right, I've got the Lakers and the Clippers, and then I've got the Dodgers and the Angels for baseball, right? And so, so let me, I'm gonna put scenarios out there. So, like, if you get ten thousand Laker fans at Sable Center, you get ten thousand Clipper fans at Sable Center, it's gonna t- sound completely different. So that's what I heard about New York and Brooklyn. So if you put ten thousand Knicks fans in Madison Square Garden. It's gonna be. It's gonna sound like they had it the other night. It, they didn't have ten thousand, obviously, but it it sounded like like it's energy. There's energy in the state in, in the stands. There's like uh, fans are crazy in New York. Obviously, we know that. But then you put ten thousand fans in Brooklyn, and it just sounds like there's ten thousand fans. You know, it, it's just different. So does is that gonna like uh, what's the championship? Obviously, the championships a championship. But from what I'm reading and what I'm listening to. Is is Brooklyn this like? Who are Brooklyn fans? Like, are they old Knicks fans? You know what I mean? Like, who are like? I don't think I know. Obviously, I'm from LA. I'm not from New York. First off, so I don't know how that works. But like I said, personally, personally looking from the outside in, like me personally, I maybe know. Maybe 10, 15, not, not even 10 Clipper fans. I know maybe four, five, maybe two two Clipper fans. The rest are Laker fans. You grew up here. The Knicks the same way. You grew up in New York. There's probably like 10, 20 guys in a classroom that are all Knicks fans. And then you maybe got like two or three guys that are Nets fans from what I'm reading, what I hear, what I talk. Uh, so like what's that dynamic like? That uh, You know? Obviously, they've got a great team, and it reminds me so much of the Clippers Lakers back in the day when you had, you know, the Clippers had this juggernaut, and the Lakers sucked, right? They just sucked. But when they played, Sable Center was ten times more buzzing than when the Clippers played, and they had a better team. And that's kind of what, you know, New York I feel like is like in a sense of a bit. The Nets being decent now is almost bigger than the Nets being. The best in New York. And that's just in New York, right? That's just in New York. Obviously, the Nets have the, the, the media the media buzz around the country, right? That, that's that's different, though. But in a city, when the Lakers were bad and the Clippers were good, the Lakers were still bigger. And that's kind of what it seems like here in New York. The Knicks are like, the Knicks are going to be, you know, they might, how cool would it be to, for them to play the Nets? But they'd get blown out, but... The Nets have a ceiling, and obviously people know like they're pay, they're maybe a, a superstar away. They're maybe a couple guys away. They'll they'll they have a ceiling, you know. The Nets really don't have a ceiling. They have all these obviously these top guys. They got this juggernaut. Uh, I still don't know the Blake Griffin stuff. Eh. Uh, the the Marcus guy. I mean, I guess he could score. The, 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 what they're gonna do with Lamarcus? They're gonna throw the ball down a couple. You know, in the second half, uh, second quarter, fourth quarter. You know, maybe get a solid four or five minutes from him. 
can't play defense. I don't know who he could guard now. Uh, but but it's just cool to see though. That, you know, New York being good at New York Knicks being good is good for the NBA. I've talked about this before. Uh, but you know, Brooklyn Nets, Knicks, Lakers, Clippers. That's what it kind of seems like a little bit to me. And this is kind of what I'm reading. It's what I'm hearing. Uh, just something to think about, right? It's uh, it's good though. It's good. You need you need need uh, NBA. The, uh, every team needs every league needs the Yankees, the Dodgers. Uh, who else? The the Cubs to be good in in basketball. You need the Knicks to be good. You need the the Lakers to be good. You need the Celtics to be good. Uh, you know you want these big market teams to be good. It just makes makes the league better. Uh, just makes everything better. And obviously you get you know, teams like Brooklyn or the, or the Clippers to kind of make some noise for a couple of years. And that's always good too. That it, It's good. It's good. Uh, and then you have teams like the, the Warriors that ended up popping off a couple of years ago. That, that, that was cool. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, it's always fun. Uh, God, God, I, I, that gets me fired up because it's kind of like a big brother, little brother, you know, you don't ever want your little brother to beat you at anything. And that's kind of like what it seems like. Uh, <laughs> little bro- little brothers are interesting guys like little brothers uh little sisters i'm sorry too they it's just i don't know what it's competitiveness but like even like growing up i remember with my brother like i i, I wouldn't let that guy beat me to the table it was always a competition whatever it was uh he was he was better academically than me i'll, I'll give him that he was a lot better academically than me but like on the sports field there was like all right, you hit X amount of home runs this year. All right, I'm going to hit this many home runs, right? I, you were this pitcher. I was a better pitcher. Uh, it's fun. But like I said, that's kind of what it, that's kind of like the vibe I'm getting here from Nets, Knicks, Lakers, Clippers. It's fun though. It's, it's, it's good competition. Uh, like I said, the, the Knicks won't be, the Knicks won't have that. The Nets have a, like I said, the Nets have a ceiling. They're not, you know, how good they could be. Can they make a run? Eh. Maybe, can the, the, but the Knick, the Nets could win a championship. Knicks could maybe make it to the second round. It'd be fun though. It'd be fun. How about that? Those two square off. Oh my god, that'd be great. I would love to see that. But we've got so much more coming up on the show, ladies and gentlemen. We've got some more uh, March, more March Madness to talk about. Some more NBA headlines that I want to talk about. So some interesting quotes that I saw this week, and uh, I'm gonna rank my uh, top ten. Uh, Young guys in the NBA. Uh, Stick around for that. We'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen, where we talk all the best basketball. We're back, and I wanted to save. Uh, so I, I kind of uh, bounce my bounce around my podcast to you know to see the dates on certain things, and I wanted to do a podcast right after this basketball game and the women's final four just ended, and I am still going crazy. Uh, there's two games today that I watched that were absolute great games. Uh, to be honest with you, these were better games than any men's game. I personally think these two games were out of this world. Uh, the Pac-12, can you please stand up? The Pac-12, please stand up. So the Final Four was interesting because so they released a promo for it uh, for the Final Four today, but it should have been called for the Final Three. So 
in the video that NCAA released UConn, uh, South Carolina, and Sanford. They did not put Arizona in it. And that's, you know, it's kind of like, uh, uh, how do, what's the best way to put this? It's like if you're invited to a party, but there's not like a, a seat for you, if that makes sense. So you're going to a party. Uh, you're all dressed up. You're ready to go. It's the first time you've ever been to this, met, met somebody, first time you've ever been anywhere. And they don't have a seat for you, but you got an invite to it. It's just, it, it's rude. It's terrible. Uh, and maybe this field, this Arizona basketball team to come out and kick some butt. But it was, I've never seen anything like that uh, in any sports. Uh, you know, when, usually when you make a mistake on a video, you probably just shouldn't release it, I think. I think the best case scenario, right, is just, uh, probably just, I just probably won't release it. Uh, but they ended up releasing it. And... It fueled Arizona. It fueled Arizona. And I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. I didn't, you know, I had watched Arizona, but, you know, I thought they were kind of just, oh, all right. But they're for real. They're for real. This McDonald, uh, McDonald, she is a bowler. 26 points. She was stepped back, uh, dribbled through the legs. Uh, oh, my gosh. From everywhere. She's quick. She's shifty. Uh, she gets to her spots. Uh, it almost reminded me of like, uh, a little bit of a Trey Young type of feel, uh, just quick first step, uh, kind of blows by people, but can also pull up. Uh, there was one play where she was, uh, kind of staring. She was waiting for the play to develop. She just stepped back right in their face, three pointer right in the face, man, Arizona pac 12 showing some love. And I talked about this. Yes. I talked this about, I talked about this on the show earlier. People don't stay up to watch a Pac-12. People don't. In uh, Arizona State Women's, oh, man. First time in program history they're going to the Final Four. Good for them. Or going to the championship, I'm sorry. Good for them. Uh, the UConn Huskies, Gino kind of came out and said this was a very immature group. Uh, all year he's kind of said that. They were kind of high. They, he he kind of, I don't know if you wanted to say, like, when they had their backs to the wall, he didn't know how they were going to respond, it almost sounded like. Uh, and they almost didn't cause I was watching this game and they really didn't know how to like climb out of this hole. Like, how were they going to climb out of the hole? Uh, what were they going to do to get out of this hole? Uh, and they, te- I don't know. They just didn't have a hell of a game. Uh, I mean, they're so young. They're a young basketball team. So they'll be back. They've got a, co- a lot of years to uh, kind of make this happen, kind of make it work. Uh, and then the other game. So that was a hell of a ball game. And then, and then the other ball game we had, uh, Stanford against South Carolina, which was another dog fight. Another dog fight. You know, Stanford, they played well. Uh, they're always going to be poised, Stanford. They're always going to play their game. Uh, South Carolina is a juggernaut. They've, always, they've been good for a couple of years. Not to say Stanford isn't. Stanford was a one seed, obviously, as well. And so was South Carolina. But the thing about this game was, like, you really, you really didn't know what was going to happen towards the end. They had a one-shot uh they had two shots actually, and Stan- Stanford kind of almost gave the game away, unfortunately. Uh, but fortunate for them, they didn't. Uh, it got ugly at the end. I was gonna uh, that could have been bad for Stanford. I'll tell you, Stanford could have been. I would have been a long ride back to Palo Alto. I tell you, that was uh, a turnover at the end, kind of a one on four situation that they had. Uh, and South Carolina missed two easy shots, you know, that uh, it was a running layup with the left hand that, you know, she should make. And then a little put back that hit the back of the iron and came back out tough, you know, it was tough for them. But, uh, you know, if they, I, you know, they wish they had that shot back because they make that shot nine times out of 10. Um, but it was tough. That was a tough one to see for them. Um, and then uh, it was it was a good game. So we have Stanford in Arizona in the finals. I don't think anybody really kind of saw it. I mean, I guess you could see it kind of coming, but to beat this UConn basketball team, I don't think many people saw that the way they beat them. Uh, kind of had they kind of they kind of threw the first punch and just kept punching and kind of just dictated the rest of the game. They, 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 UConn never really had really a chance. I want to say. Uh, but because they, they really didn't. They were just uh, kind of going through the motions, I want to say. Like, I don't know. Uh, but I think, like I said, 
Sanford came out to play uh, South Carolina. That was a, that was a good game, but in the UConn Arizona game, it kind of seemed like uh, Arizona that kind of fired them up earlier and not ha- being in the video, and they just came out and punched them in the throat and kind of stepped on their necks and didn't let them breathe. That's what it kind of what it felt like in that matchup. Uh, UConn never really took control. UConn never really had. Uh, really a time to get back into the game it felt like uh yeah they were in control all game uh good for Arizona though you, young coach uh you know Gino's gonna be back that team is young UConn will be back I don't think they have much to worry about but nonetheless they lose and you know you never want to lose any game for that matter but losing then is, is tough it's a tough one um so now that we talk about that I want to talk a little bit about Kevin Durant so Kevin Durant's kind of always been known as being this guy that he hides behind a cell phone. Uh, he's very thin skin. He lets things get to him. And in his latest incident, he let Michael Rappaport, who is a comedian slash actor, kind of come after him a little bit and he let him have it. And uh, Katie kind of clapped back and didn't really sit well with him, I guess. But what I want to talk about with Kevin Durant is like, so we all went to middle school, high school, right? And th- people do petty things. Like growing up, people do petty things, right? But there's no I, there's no excuse for Kevin Durant having a burner phone. First of all, that's like a couple years ago he had a burner phone, and then uh, people found out like the burner Twitter account. I'm sorry, where he was like responding to fans and stuff like that, and then it kind of like leaked that. Hey, is this the real Kevin Durant doing this? Like, what's going on? But my whole thing with Kevin Durant is he is arguably... So he's a seven-footer that could shoot. You guys know how I feel about Kevin Durant. He's the second best player in the league to me uh, after after LeBron James. Seven-footer, could score, defend, could run, could pass the ball. He could literally do anything on a basketball court. But he's seven feet tall. Like, he's seven foot. He looks over anyone. He could do any jump shot he wants. Uh, literally anything he wants to do on a basketball court, he could do. Uh, there's nothing on a basketball court that Kevin Durant can't do. But off the court with Kevin Durant, to me, is like, man, don't you have, like, what are your what do your friends around you say? Like, do they want you clapping back at, like, 17-year-old kids on the internet? Do they want you talking to, like, a B-list celebrity in Michael Rappaport, if that? Like, should you? Even if you have a relationship with a guy, like, you put that into words. Like, you took the time out of the day. And I don't get it with Kevin Durant. You're the second best player in the NBA. So let's say, let's look at, let's, I'm looking at the professional soccer. It's Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo, I would say. Let's just say. It's like if one of those two guys copped back at fans. It's almost like if, Mike Trout or Mookie Betts clap back at one of their fans at, at, or at an opposing fan. Like, what? That just doesn't make sense. Like, these are fans. These are kids. These are people that are trying to do this, and you're giving them the time of the day. And it's not like it's the first time because it's happened multiple times. Not the first time. This always happens to Kevin Durant. Literally always. Always. Every time we see something, oh, like, Kevin Durant has something to say. Dude, you're the second best player in the NBA. And I get it. Like, I get it. Like, you want to put set people straight. But, dude, why? Like, literally, I, I, I literally want to ask Kevin Durant, like, what, like, like, why? Like, to me, it's like if somebody clapped back at my, uh, it's like if somebody clapped back on my Twitter or at my, this podcast and was like, hey, Eddie, you suck. Like, hey, you know, I'm up and coming. I'm new. I, you know, I'm not, you know, I've had a couple, like a couple years of experience, but like, I would probably like feel it, you know, like my podcast probably sucks. I'd feel it, right? Because I'm like, you know, up and coming and kind of starting to get going. Okay, I could get that. But if I'm the best podcaster in the entire world, I'm the best radio host in the entire world. Like, you think a Twitter message or a Twitter mention is going to like derail me? Or like, gonna tell me something? Maybe I'll read it. And I'll be like, ah, okay, that, that that's a troll. That's a guy trying to troll me there. But to like, for me to like make a separate account on Twitter, the fact that you go on Twitter and make a separate account, 
right? Like, you're not even your main account. Like, you have to, like, put a fake picture, like, a fake name, uh, whatever, however that goes, right? It's like how people have fences, right? It's like an account that you use, but, like, so so let's let's say with a fence is. So a fence is, like, an account that you use, but, like, just to, like, kind of maybe, like, see, like, so the Instagram's weird. I don't want to dive into deep into it, but it's like basically another account you have to see, you know, cool things or post like things that you wouldn't post on your main page for whatever reason, etc. So Kevin Durant has this to come at fans. And I'm just like, why? You're Kevin Durant. Now, I get it. Not everybody has like Charles Barkley's personality, right? Like, Charles Barkley, you could tell him something, and you'd be like, yeah, okay, I don't care. Like, I, 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 you could tell me whatever you want. Like, I'm, you know, Charles, in Charles' words, he'd probably say, I'm richer than you. I have a better life than you. You know, that's just Charles, right? And I'm not speaking for Charles, but kind of just the persona I get, or just, it doesn't really care. It doesn't bother him, basically, right? Kevin Durant, like, why don't you, like, maybe, like, write it in a notebook, like, why do you have to, why do you even have to read it? If you know this stuff's going to tick you off, like, it, it, it just, it's just so baffling to me. Like, it really is. Like, if you don't like something, why keep going back to it? And then, like, having to, like, <laughs> do you realize that some of these kids he's capping, clapping back at are probably, like, maybe, like, 14-year-old kids, 15-year-old kids, 16, 17-year-old kids in high school? Being like, hey, I'm going to take a shot at Kevin Durant. Like, like, hey, KD, you suck. Like, you know, like, you have to go to the Warriors to, like, win a championship. Okay, so what? I did it, and I did that. That's what I stand by. Like, that's what he is. But don't come back and, like, like be a burner account or, like, come at these kids. Like, you're literally playing into their game. Oh my god, it like it's crazy to me. And I keep seeing like Michael Rappaport and then he threatened Michael Rappaport. He called him some some antiphobic names, which obviously weren't right. And just to see like when I I was I, I don't know, I don't remember what I was doing, but my buddy sent this to me and I'm like he was like, Hey Eddie, is this real? And I look at down at it, I'm like, No, it, you know, it's not real. Like this can't be real. Like Kevin Rant's already dealt with like burner accounts. I'm like, no, you know, no, he's bigger than this now. Like, no. He's no, right? And then I looked into it. I'm like, wait, this is Kevin Durant. Easy money sniper. Verified. I'm just like, no. I still can't believe it, right? I'm just like, no, 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 no. So then I read more into it. Then he comes out and does like a press conference. And he says, I'm sorry about it. KD. All right, this is my statement to Kevin Durant. This is my statement to Kevin Durant. All right, man. If I, if you if Kevin Durant ever listens to my show, Kevin Durant, hey bro, homie to homie, you're the second best player in the NBA, arguably one of the best best scorers of all time. Your talent has almost never been seen before. You're literally at the highest point of your game. You're literally like, no like, no one like whatever anybody says, like they're haters. They're they're haters. They're trying to get under your skin. Like, bro, honestly, like, don't don't even pay attention. Delete Twitter. Delete Instagram. If you want to read some stuff, okay. But, like, take it with a grain of salt, right? Like, you're literally Kevin Durant, bro. That, that, that's what I would, that's what a friend, like, if I was his friend, that's what I would tell him. Like, dude, you're Kevin Durant. You know, like, like, why are you engaging? I, 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 I have not got it. And is Kevin Durant like petty? Is he soft? Is he, uh, weak minded? Is he like, uh, does he care what everybody says? You have, do you understand how much energy you have to give off? Like, so like I have a couple like people that I follow, like a, a bunch of beat writers that I follow. And every time they tweet, like, or, you know, write a story, like I get a message for it. Sometimes that's overwhelming. And that's like five people that I follow. Now, I can imagine. So these so these professional guys like Kim Durant, especially, they probably have like two phones, right? One for like family and then another one for like pleasure or whatever. 
I can't imagine the amount of things that like you see. Like the amount of messages Kevin Durant gets on a nightly basis. Now at this point, because people know like, hey, if I reach out to Kevin Durant, he like might respond. Like I might make Sports Center. Like I might be like on Bleacher Report. Like I might be on The Athletic. Kevin Durant responds to a fan. Kevin Dur- Kevin Durant responds via Instagram. Kevin Durant responds via Twitter. Like you you have a pretty solid chance if you like message Kevin Durant on any of these platforms that you might get a message back. And if it's like hating on him, it might probably be a better chance. Like you have a better chance of being like, "Hey, uh Kevin Durant, you suck." Or saying like, hey, Kevin Durant, good game. Like, you have a better chance of him responding if you say you suck. And like, full-blown, like, cussing you out. And you could be like 14 years old. And you might just be hanging out with the boys after, you know, hanging out, chilling, hanging out, playing some Fortnite, playing some Call of Duty. And you're like, hey, I'm going to message Durant. Let's see what he can get. This is the second best player in the entire NBA. Arguably one of the best players of all time. Kevin, man. Kevin, man. Dude. Second best player in the NBA. Arguably one of the best scorers of all time. You're all-time great, bro. All-time great. If you need, like, a, a friend to tell you, like, hey, dude, like, you don't need to talk, hit me up. Like, reach out to Golden State Media. They'll give you my information. Like, I'm here for you. I'll, 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 I'm literally here for you. But don't stop coming at kids. Stop coming at these Twitter fingers, like, they, like Drake said. They're, these guys have Twitter fingers. These guys are sitting behind a keyboard. You're playing at Barclays. You're playing at the Garden. You're playing at Staples. You played in NBA Finals. You're Finals MVP. You're an elite MVP. Can you imagine? I, 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 I don't I'm lost for words. And I've had this conversation before. Like, I've done this. I've talked with my buddies about it. I'm like, yo, like, let's see Kevin Durant's side. Let's see Kevin Durant's side. Like, uh, somebody's, like, coming at me. You're Kevin Durant. At the, end of, at, at the end of every conversation, we always come up with the point that, like, he's Kevin Durant. Like, he's not, like, and I don't mean it, like, these guys are all NBA guys. But, like, he's not Caldwell Pope. He's not like Lou Will. Like, you're Kevin Durant. Dude, grow some, like, some thicker skin. You know how social media is now. Like, people are just coming at you now. And if you go after a guy like Michael Rappaport now, like, you better believe Michael Rappaport or anybody that gets, like, stuff like that thrown at them, you better believe they're going to want their five seconds of fame. Like, Michael Rappaport's probably getting interviews, getting probably getting some promos. Like, hey, how do you know KD? Like, is this real? Like, like he's getting love off of you. Cloud off of you. And obviously, this is what they want. This is what people want. They want they want you to respond. Like I said, Kevin Durant, I'm here for you, bro. I promise you I'm here for you. Uh, call me. Text me. Dude. You're Kevin Durant. Just remember that. Just just be like, I'm Kevin Durant. These guys are probably sitting in their mom's basement, like Charles Barkley would say. Like, come on. Come on, Katie. You're a lot better than this. I promise you. Katie, you're, you're Kevin Durant. And that's my that's my, that's my little rant on Kevin Durant being uh, sometimes a little bit soft. Uh, we've got so much more to talk about. Uh, I'm going to be ranking some. Uh, I'm going to be doing some rankings here in a second. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the cover of the NBA, how it went down. The Warriors lost by 53. I want to talk about that. Is Steph maybe coming to the Lakers? I don't know. Find out after this break. We'll be we'll be talking about it here. This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now.
Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. I've got my last segment here with you guys for the week, and I'm excited for this segment. I really am. I've been waiting for this one all night. I'm going to go over some a little bit about uh, what happened tonight in the NBA, what happened last night in the NBA, uh, and then I'm going to give you guys my top 10 players under 25 years old. Uh, this was uh, tough. I've been working on it all week. Uh, it's been uh, one of those things where I have I have a drawing board here, and I have so many like scratches on it. Like, no, this guy's a bet. No, uh, you know. So bear with me. There might be changes as I go. Um, but yeah, there, I, I, I love this. It was hard. It was actually the, the league is in, is in such good hands, but let me, let's get into the little bit of NBA talk, uh, before this, obviously we're going to be ranking the NBA guys and tonight the Warriors got blown out. So obviously Steph didn't play. Uh, they lost by 53. Uh, Steve Kerr said in short words, it's humiliating. 53 points to the Raptors, no Lari. Uh, it doesn't matter if Jamon played or not. He wouldn't have made a difference because he averages, I think, four points a game or five, six points a game. So, uh, yeah. So, they lost, and we've been hearing nothing but the, from the All-Star break. So, LeBron drafted uh, Steph for the All-Star team, right? It might have been first or second. I can't think of it straight. But he drafted him, and everyone was like, oh, LeBron, why would he take, you know, Curry? Like, what's going on? So before this, there is no, there was no free agents, really. You know, the only free agent coming up is Kawhi, I believe, from that draft, from that All-Star game. So there wasn't much recruiting going on from, like, the past ones. You know, there's some recruiting, you could say, going on. But think about it. Steph. So I, I had a whole thing on this where scenarios play out in all star games, and you see like, oh, how cool would it be if this guy played with this guy, if Dame played with LeBron, or if Dame played with Steph? You know, like you get these scenarios that pop in your head, and the one that keeps lingering around is Steph and LeBron. Like, is this does this have any traction? Like, LeBron could obviously or uh, Steph could opt out next year. He's a free agent next year, obviously. For good reasons, the Warriors could pay him two hundred million dollars, and I'm not an inside source or anything, but I have a good idea that Mister Joe Lacom is going to sign Steph, st- sign re- going to re-sign Steph again for that max. Now, does Steph sign it? I'm not no insider here. I'm not saying that Mister Lacom, you know, a good guy and all that. But, hey, how fun would that be? Steph and LeBron. Obviously, LeBron, LeBron's coming off an injury. Uh, he's probably going to – he's refuel, He's rebooting like a machine he is. Uh, then Steph, you know, they could, they could make a run. Maybe get Bronny on the team. Yeah, you don't know. But this is starting to get out of hand. Like, I guess Steph didn't play. I get that. 53 points, though? That's a lot of points for the Warriors. How do they say it up in Chase Arena or in Oracle? Guys, this is getting ugly. And they're pros. These are pros. And I don't know. That's an ugly loss to me, honestly. But, hey, get that traction going. Get the 4x4 going. Maybe we get Stefan LeBron. I, I think that'd be fun. Think about how fun that would be. Hey, there's going to be fans in LA, by the way. It's a good sign. We're starting to see more fans and more fans, you know. Like I, I talked about it earlier, it was opening day yesterday in baseball. We saw more fans kind of coming along, and uh, it was cool to see. We're starting to see more fans, and uh looks like they're opening up for uh, uh, NBA. You know, Dallas has some fans. I know New Orleans has some fans. Uh, there's a handful of teams that have fans. Actually, for the most part, most teams, like Boston, I think, started last week to have fans. Uh, the Lakers and probably the Warriors are probably going to be the last ones to have fans. Uh, but but the, they're going to have fans. It's going to be fun in April. It's going to be fun. But let's get into these uh, some of these scores tonight. Uh, the Lakers uh, went up to Sacramento. No Andre Drummond. No Anthony Davis. No LeBron. 115-94. Those are games you have to win. Uh, Boston beat uh, the Houston uh, Rockets as they should. 
118 to 102. The Dallas Mavericks are getting hot, ladies and gentlemen. They're getting hot at the right time. Luka Doncic, I've talked about it before. He might be number one on my list. <laughs> you guys know how much I love the guy. Uh, 26 points. Uh, Hell of a player, eight rebounds, seven assists tonight. He was a minus eleven, minus seven. You know that's that's he's just not very good defensively. Uh, Julius Randle at fourteen, he had a quiet night, five for twenty from the field. Uh, Memphis beat Minnesota Timberwolves. Let's see how. Let's open up the vault to see my Anthony Edwards how he did tonight. Twenty two points, nine for fourteen off from the field. Not bad. But I feel like I'm the only one talking about that. I think it's LaMelo or LaMelo Ball's probably got it uh, locked in his hand, locked in for that number uh, one. Atlanta Hawks beat the New Orleans Pelicans, a tough one. New Orleans Pelicans, they, uh, Josh Hart, something happened to his thumb. I hope it's not for a long. Josh Hart's one of my favorite players in the NBA, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know that. Uh, I would love to have him. But a Villanova guy, coach well, coach tough, know how to win, good program, was there for his four years. I believe, uh, you know that that's that's a factory for kids. If you want a good pro, you go to, go get a kid from Villanova, go get a kid from Gonzaga, go get you know they just have pros. Uh, I always talk about that being uh, one of my favorite things for. Uh... But they lost tonight. The Hawks. Uh, what did? No Trey Young. Wow, no Trey Young. Am I seeing this right? Yeah, no Trey Young. Bogdanovich had. Bogdanovich twenty six points. Wow, no Trey Young. Interesting. Am I just like blanking out? Or... Yeah, no Trey. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, Pelicans. What they look like? Yeah, they lost. That's not a interesting. Interesting. I didn't watch that game. I watch most games, but I didn't watch that one. Oklahoma City loses to the Phoenix Suns, one forty to one hundred three. I did watch the Milwaukee Portland game, guys. That was a. Uh... That was a game where they absolutely had – there was no one in the building, like no one in the vicinity that could they – didn't, they didn't have anybody that could guard Giannis. And obviously Giannis is a tough guard. He had 47 tonight. Obviously no one's going to be able to guard Giannis, but like they legit had no one to like even come close. Like he was 18 for 18 from the field. The only shots he missed were from three. Uh, first player to do that in a while. Uh, yeah, Lillard had 32. Not much you can do there though, Dame. Uh, CJ, what did CJ have? 18. You got to be better than that, CJ. Car- I, I saw a highlight. I was watching the game and Carmelo tried to guard him at one point. It just, you know, no, no, just too little. Just too little. Yeah, guys. Yeah. There was no one in the, vis- like, th- they would have had to call, like, the nearest NBA team with, like, yeah. They didn't have anybody to guard him. It was, it was, if you watch the highlights, they legit had no one to guard him. So let's get into this. I want to dive into this. Uh, this is one of my fa- I, I've been looking forward to doing this. So I wanted to do my top fifteen or my top ten kids at fifteen, uh, twenty five or younger, twenty five or younger. So I may have a list that like you guys don't agree with, but I'm totally okay with that. Um, I'm okay with it, just because like I'm okay with it. And uh, there's no, uh, I don't feel bad for it. And uh, yeah. So here we go. Should I give you guys my honorable mentions first? I, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, but I'm going to give you guys my coming in at 10. Bam Adebayo. So... We obviously saw what they did. We obviously saw what the, what the, he did this last year. They made it to the conference finals, right? Uh, good basketball team, tough basketball team. Bam Adebayo, guys, is like a hybrid four five who could guard one through five. Quick feet. Uh, he's only twenty three years old. Shot blocker. Uh, his shots evolving, but I love how he plays. Miami always gets it right with these big guys. They know how to draft. Uh, he's in a perfect situation. Coach Spolstra, uh, Pat Riley, they know how to build these guys up. Bam out of bio, guys. He's gonna be a reckon. He's gonna be around. The, he's gonna be around for a long time. Uh, this year he's averaging nineteen points. Uh, 55% from the field, three, 28% from three, nine rebounds, five assists, 
one and a half, one one block a game. The guy is a problem. I there's he's like constant energy, and I love guys with energy. I'm a high energy guy. Uh, I'm all I'm I'm all for uh, for Bam Adebayo. Uh, coming in at nine, I have Brandon Ingram. Uh, Brandon Ingram, it feels like he's been in the league for a lot longer. He's only 23 years old. Uh, he obviously started off with my Lakers, uh, and he's still young. Like I said, he's still only 23. He feel like he's been in the league forever. 20, uh, 20, uh, he was, he was at Duke for uh, 30 minutes. Uh, but he's one of these guys that he's a lot. He reminds me, obviously a lot of Kevin Durant. He's got a lot of that game. Get to his spots. He, he's got so much, his game has matured so much. He gets to his spots. He's an all-star, uh, you know, I think him leaving the Lakers is probably one of the best things that's happened for his career. Uh, I don't think he would be having this career if it, he was still in the Lakers. Uh, uh, he was He's more of a I need the ball type of guy. And uh, he's learning to play. Him, him and Zion are going to be a uh, They're going to be, I, they're going to be great. I, I, I love, I love them. They're still young. Uh, Zoe is obviously still young. Uh, they've got some pieces. They could keep Zlonzo and then obviously Zion. Uh, he's averaging 23 points this year, 47, 47% from the field, 38 from three, uh, four rebounds, four assists. I still think he needs to get better of getting the people around him better. Um, I still think I still think that. Uh, this one might shock you guys, but I absolutely love coming in at eight for me. Is Shea Gilgis Alexander? I love Shea. I will take Shea over a lot of guys, and he's one of these guys that I have a lot of scratches on it because I kept trying to put him higher. Um, but Shea is, to be honest with you, I think the Clippers would be better if they had him over Paul George. That might be crazy. Put that on a T-shirt. Put that on whatever you want. They would be the Clippers would be a better basketball team with Shea Gilgis Alexander over Paul George. Come at me on Twitter. Come at me wherever you want to come at me at. I said it. You heard it here first on the pod. I said it. I think the Clippers would be better with Shea Gilgis Alexander than Pandemic P. I said it. He's a better player. 23 points, 50% from the field, 41% from three, four, four uh, rebounds, five assists. He makes, he makes plays. He's a playmaker. He's not afraid of the moment. Uh, plays at his own pace. Guys, I, I, I actually want to put him higher, but I'm not because uh, I don't know why I'm not. But I should. I love Shea. If that, if that little segment didn't tell you how much I love Shea, uh, yeah, I want to put him higher. Seven. I'm gonna go. I, this is a scratch. So I had this. I had this wrong. I had this uh, turned around. I'm gonna go at seven. Yeah, I'm at seven. Jamal Murray. So Murray, Bubble Murray, I thought was gonna be great. Uh, we thought he was gonna be a lot better uh, coming into this year, and he was kind of. Uh, it's kind of been a weird, but he's coming better as of late. Uh, the last three games, he's averaging twenty. He had twenty three against Clippers, thirty against the 76ers, and seventeen last night. So he's just been a little inconsistent for me. Uh, but he's still a great young superstar. Uh, only twenty four years old out of Canada. Another Kentucky kid. He was there for thirty minutes. Uh, you know, I love the one and dones there. Uh, but yeah, Jamal Murray, uh, him and the Joker are going to be a force in the West for so many years to come. Uh, the jo- uh you know, obviously the Joker. We all know how good the Joker is. And they have Michael Porter, who I think could also be in my top ten. But he has he shows flashes. He's one of those guys that keeps showing flashes, but doesn't really uh, get there. Right? We need him to be consistent. I'm very. Uh, we need to be consistent, guys. Uh, that's how you crack my top ten. Uh, and then coming in at so I switched that up. Coming in at six, I, I have him a little high. I wish I had him lower. Uh, who do I have at five? Yeah, I can't do that. So I have John ja Morant coming in at six. I love John ja Morant. So you guys know how much I love LeBron, Luca. John ja might be my third favorite player in the NBA. He's he's like a high, he's I don't even know how to describe. Him. He's like a Russell Westbrook, uh, like Allen Iverson. Like I don't know how to describe y'all, but he's so fun to watch. He's so fun to watch. And obviously, he's in Memphis. He's the grindhouse. Uh, Murray State. You remember when he dunked all over Marquette? Man, he put that kid on a poster. Uh, I love watching y'all play. Any t- any chance they're on uh, NBA League Pass, I you know, anytime they play, I love watching y'all. He's so fun. He's so athletic. He's so freaky. Like, 
he looks like he's one of those guys when he jumps, he just like he keeps getting higher and higher. Obviously, that's what you do when you jump. You get higher and higher. But he looks like he just keeps going up. Remember like the Monstars in Space Jam? That's what it looks like for a jaw to me. Jaw's special. Uh, he had 36 the other night against the Jazz. He's needs He needs help, though. He's only averaging 19 this year, uh, 44% from the field. Obviously, the 3.25%, but he needs help. Seven assists, he needs help. Uh, that's the only way to jaw. That they're, they, they're like two, three players away. Uh, they've got some pieces, but they need uh, some help. Last you know, last year, they couldn't even hold on. 21 years old, though. 21, he's special. Jaw. Coming in at five, Jason Tatum, another dookie. 23, 20, he's 23 years old. Uh, Tatum is... Tatum is Tatum. I love Jason Tatum. Uh, he's the leader of that team. Obviously, Jalen Brown is another young guy that, that, that I'm sorry didn't crack my list, but I think Jason Tatum, 23 years old, out of St. Louis, Missouri. Shout out St. Louis, Missouri. Shout out my boy Braxton Williams, uh, one of my buddies. But in the last three games, 26, 25, 34, at the Celtics are just not very good this year to me, to be completely honest with you. That's the only take I have on them. I think they're a little small. Uh, they've got to get bigger fast, and I don't know if there's much help. Ty- they let Tice go. Uh, that, you know. But he's going to be he, – his jury is going to hang in the rafters for Boston. Uh, they're going to need some help, though. Uh, I, but I trust in Danny A. and, you know, that he'll bring that help to him. But but uh, Tatum is uh, special, guys. He's 25 this year. Uh, 45% from the field, 38 from three, six rebounds, four assists, uh, one steal a game. Kid special, man. And then he, if you watch him on a string too, man, oh, uh, he has a ball on a string. He And he's a big guy too, and he, he can move. Coming in at four, uh, it's still crazy to think that like Ben Simmons is still not 25 years old. He's 24 years old, uh, 6'11", point guard who's like uh like a little magic johnson i still gonna knock him i don't have him he should be higher but he still can't shoot guys and i you guys know how i feel about shooters i've talked about it on my show before i've talked about Giannis. they get you could beat him in the playoffs you literally build that wall and it's kind of like ball game you know and uh I think he's uh, kind of accepted his role this year with doc rivers the doc rivers is probably the best thing that's happened to uh, ben simmons and i and uh, I think he's kind of finally playing his role. And, uh, yeah, Ben Simmons coming in at four. He's the second best player on that team now. I think Joel's kind of, you know, taking that over. Uh, but, yeah, he's uh, – I love Ben Simmons. Just runs. Good def- – great defender. All uh, First team all defense. Uh, Going to have – he might win all defensive player of the year this year. Defensive player of the year this year. Um, yeah. Coming in at three, Devin Booker. The, the, he's an assassin. He's an assassin. Devin Booker, I he's right behind Jaw from one of my favorite players in the NBA. He's one of these guys that he 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 he's open once he gets off the bus. Like he's like that. He, he's just automatic. Gets to his spots. Uh, big Kobe guy. Kobe kind of you know. He had last three games thirty two forty five and twenty one. He had an off night tonight, but they uh you know tough night. 49% from the field, 35 from three. He's still got to get better in assists. He's got to get better. I think that he's got to get people. Uh, that's how you take the next step, get kind of involving, you know, the next guy, making the next guy, making that pass, uh, getting your teammates involved. You know, that's how what the superstars are, right? They get, uh, they make other players better. And I think book still, uh, he's learning though. He's got Chris Paul there where he'll learn. Uh, uh, yeah. I think books awesome. Books great. Coming in at number two, Zion Williams, and Zion's kind of coming into his own as of late, guys. Um, Zion's special. He's only twenty. It's only his second year. He's like finally like he's like a he's he's a, he's a deep freezer that could run. Like think about it. he's literally a deep freezer that has like linebacker speed. Uh, like got guys like a cat. He's basically like a big old cat. He's special, transcending player. Uh, I don't know how much. I don't know. The Pelicans are gonna have to do something though to keep him around, unless he's got like he's got all these endorsements or he's got all this money. He's gonna have endorsements everywhere because he's only twenty. He's a likable kid, good kid, uh, Duke kid. Uh, you know he's coached well. He's he, you know his interview. He's really poised. Last year he took a lot of slack. You know for kind of maybe is he too heavy? Does he have to lose weight? Does he know how to run? Uh, but. Zion's gonna be all right. Uh, I, I, 
Zion's Zion. 26 points this year. Uh, 34% from three, which is not, you know, it's not terrible. 62% from the field. Seven rebounds. But he's a monster, guys. There's no stopping Zion. And, uh, yeah, Zion's going to be here for a long time. The league is in good hands. And number one, you guys know, I ordered his jersey earlier this week. Uh, He is next. When LeBron decides to call it quits, which I hope is not any anytime soon, it's Luka Magic's world, and we're all just going to be living in it. Luka Magic. Luka Superstar. Luka the Phenom. Luka the Dallas, Texas Killer. Like, guy, he's in a kid. Guys, turn on a Luka game. Just turn on a Luka game, and, and uh, that's it. And the team when he goes out, the team get you could see like it, it's like when LeBron goes on the floor, you see the significant fall. Comes on the floor, whole different team, whole different ball game. Twenty eight, eight and eight, Luka Magic, Luka Doncic. He's next. He's next. He, I was watching the game against the Celtics the other night. He had a step back three from the like the logo. Step back, easy, flick of the wrist. Guys, Luca is insane. He's next. He's uh he's now, but he's next when I'm saying face of the league. But the NBA is in such good hands with all these young guys. And obviously, I got some honorable mentions. I got Zoe, uh, Lamelo Ball, uh, Donovan Mitchell. I don't even talk about Donovan Mitchell. Uh, Jalen Brown. Such good hands, guys. But Luka Magic, Zion, Tatum, Booker, Simmons, Bam, Ingram, Shea, Murray, Jaw. League's in great hands, ladies and gentlemen. And there you have it. There is my show for the week. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Hope you guys have a good Easter. Hope you guys have a good weekend. Wherever you listen to me from, thank you so much. Hope you have a great day. Eddie is out. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Basketball Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program